Good morning, everyone. Great audience response, that's fantastic. And um, I hope everyone had a really good evening last night, certainly from what I saw um, at the point I left. It was, uh, everyone was having a good evening, so it's nice to see you all back here, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for this morning and for the rest of the program today. Um, so what I've got to do now is to give a few reflections on yesterday's um, sessions, and then I'm going to hand over to a series of uh, three excellent uh, speakers who are going to give us some other challenge and perspectives uh, on the agenda that we're uh, pursuing and exploring at this conference. Um, so I think the first thing to say is I just want to remind you about this survey um, that uh, I talked about a couple of times yesterday. Uh, we now know that if you have particularly an iPhone, if you hold up the camera to the screen, the iPhone will actually read the uh, QR code and uh, take you to the survey. So uh, if you uh, have an iPhone, or try it with an Android as well, although I'm told it doesn't work quite so well, uh, please do that. We're very keen to, to capture as much uh, of your views and insights in the survey as we possibly can. Um, so yesterday, we had uh, a really good, I think, range of uh, speakers contributing to the conference. Uh, perspective of the regulator, uh, perspective of uh, former government ministers uh, with uh, a, a view from the NHS and a really interesting panel discussion, I hope you agree, at the end of the day, uh, looking at uh, the uh, challenge that we outlined when we launched the uh, white paper uh, yesterday and exploring some of the opportunities and, and how one mitigates some of the risks and I think that was a, a very useful session. So what I wanted to do was just sort of pick up on some of the messages that I think uh, were key uh, threads during the, the day uh, as I heard them. Uh, the first really was a point that was made by Stephen Dorrell during the day, and he, uh, I think, made a really eloquent case uh, during the course of the day, an eloquent case for integrating health and social care, something that he has long championed and campaigned on and advocated as a select committee chair. He also then said to us that in terms of the white paper that we had published yesterday, there was one additional thing that he felt we uh, as a, an organization and we as a sector needed to have, and I've summed it up with this slide, uh, that uh, we need to be open-minded in the approach we take. I would use the phrase, we need to be agnostic uh, in the way in which we approach commissioners, the way in which we approach uh, the journey that we're on. Uh, and um, I thought that was a, a good piece of advice that he gave us. And again, I think another very strong theme that came throughout uh, the conference and started with Mark's presentation at the beginning of the day yesterday uh, was the, the importance of the human voice, of choice, of touch, of, of that relational aspect of care. And certainly in some of the sort of Twitter that was going on beyond the conference, people reacting to our conference and our tweeting yesterday, there were those that were saying, oh, this is all about saving money. And of course it is about how we use resources more effectively. It's all about replacing people. Uh, and I think it's really important, and I think the message that came across to us yesterday, that we're also emphasizing how the technology enables people to move away from the transactional to be much more focused on the relationships that give richness to people's lives and uh, quality to the care that they experience. Uh, and again, I think um, that point was uh, very much uh, reinforced by Mark when he talked about how we needed to think more about the, the experience, the lived experience of people who use services. And I came across this uh, picture, which I thought just summed it up perfectly uh, in terms of, uh, and also a point that Anne Cooper made yesterday, that products must enhance and not add additional burdens. She talked then about how uh, simply shifting the administrative task onto the person using the care services uh, is, is, is not the right way forward and I thought this uh, perfectly sums up a, a customer or citizen centric approach versus a, a company or product centric approach uh, and I think a good message that came through very strongly yesterday. Another point that Stephen Dole made to us which I think was echoed during the day by others was about outcomes and whose outcomes are we talking about when we use this phrase. We in the white paper we published last year, Putting People First, talked about the need for uh, a greater focus on outcomes. And we were very clear that we meant the outcomes from the perspective of those who use services and their families and carers. And we think that's an important part of the conversation that this sector needs to have with uh, colleagues in the NHS and social care who are commissioning services. Uh, and positioning it that way is absolutely key to the sort of transformation in services that we're, we're advocating and we advocated last year and continue to advocate now. 
And then we had David Behan and uh, his uh, contribution. He set out quite a lot of the work that the Care Quality Commission is doing to come to terms with the uh, transformation and change that uh, digital channels and digital approaches to health and care are bringing about. And of course, one of the things he said to us was that quality is a collective effort. And he's very clear about this, that just simply saying it's the regulator who is responsible for quality is an abdication of everyone else's responsibility for quality. And I'm very clear personally as a former minister that this is something that we cannot just lay at the door of a care quality regulator. They're never going to be everywhere they need to be to provide us the level of assurance we should expect of services that are so intimately in touch with people's lives. So I thought that was an incredibly uh, important message. Uh, and again, sort of underscores the, uh, the, the need for us to understand that as we move into this digital world increasingly, the challenge that the Care Quality Commission has is that they're not just now looking at services where digital is the channel by which a pretty conventional service is being offered, but also that digital itself is becoming the intervention. And that then begins to raise some very interesting questions about quite what is and is outside of scope of regulation and what is and is inside uh, scope for standards uh, that are being set. So I thought when David then went on to sort of give us this sort of point about, well, is it the regulatory end of the spectrum or is it the sort of caveat emptor sort of buyer beware end of the spectrum that we're talking about? And he gave the example of apps uh, and, and the universe of apps that sort of is exploding out there in terms of the, the numbers that are, are being created, used, and then maybe withdrawn from the market. Uh, that uh, having an understanding of that, and it's where I think the uh, TSA's quality standards framework really fits in and why uh, when we launched that last year we were very clear that it needed to move from uh, a list-based approach to one that was very much focused on the outcomes uh, that services are providing for service users. Um, and then um, we had Anne's, I think, excellent presentation uh, the chief nurse from NHS Digital, and she um, shared with us a, an excellent video. And I just took a screen grab from that and talked about empathy. And I, I, we, we tweeted the links to that um, video a number of times over the last 24 hours. And I would just commend that video as something that just to help shape and shake people into thinking about how and what products they're designing. I just loved the way in which, in the end, the guy became the disruptor. And uh, whilst he was still using the piece of technology-enabled care in the form of the fork, uh, it was being used to disrupt the intention of those that were not interested in his outcomes. They were interested in their outcomes. And they certainly weren't the ones that were making his life any better. So that, I thought, was an interesting set of messages yesterday. And then we had the panel discussion at the end of the day, and we kicked that off with Hugh, Hugh Sanders. Um, and I mean, he, I think, gave us a pretty clear confirmation that what we had set out in the white paper at the beginning of the day about this challenge of the shift from analog to digital uh, is not a, a, a never issue. It's not something that's never going to happen. This is inevitable. It is going to happen. And in, I think he pretty much confirmed that 2025 is, is the deadline. We'll hear more uh, about that in one of our presentations later on today. Um, but I think there was also something else he said, which I think after the uh, session finished, I reflected on further. And it was the question that was asked about, well, what's acceptable failure in this sector as we move from the sort of pretty reliable uh, traditional technology around analog to, to the uh, challenges of moving to, to a digital platform. And I think that it's not sufficient for Ofcom to tell us that it is a responsibility of others to be concerned about addressing that issue. I think Ofcom have to address it as well. Ofcom have to be clear about how they would measure it and how they would expect it to be tested. But it's not sufficient to advocate and say that it's a quality, a care quality matter that should be passed off to the Care Quality Commission and the other quality regulators in the other home nations. So uh, that's something we will be feeding back to them, that they have to be part of uh, addressing those issues and not to uh, abdicate uh, any responsibility for them. We also had um, Carl Johan from Sweden, from Doro, speaking to us, and he, um, I think, provided us really with some very useful uh, insight from the experience from Sweden. And certainly, we have been taking that on board in thinking about our next steps, and I'll be saying more about the next steps the TSA will be taking with regards to the white paper uh, later on uh, today. 
Uh, and then I think really a point that was underscoring something that I said when I launched the white paper yesterday, which Steve Kerfel uh, outlined, really was um, graphically represented by uh, his use of the story of Blockbuster uh, and the emergence of Netflix. And I put this up, make no apology for doing so. It really seems to me that this is the, 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 the fundamental part of this inflection point we are about to encounter, of this switch from analog to digital. Uh, of whether we are the disrupted or the disruptors, and um, uh, we need to be working that through. And I think what I would say is that TSA, with the work we've done so far on this uh, journey, are there as a keen and willing partner for each and every one of you in the journeys and planning that you now need to be doing. And that was the last message that came across in the panel discussion yesterday, that this is the time to plan. We have just a sufficient window, not really any more, more time than we need, and certainly not uh, uh, much more time uh, than we need either. So that time to plan, uh, I think, was the message that every single member of the panel we had at the end of the day uh, was, uh, was delivered. So those were just some of my reflections from yesterday. I think we had an excellent program in the uh, innovation and the apps zones and also in the breakout sessions. The call for papers that we issued ahead of this conference really, I think, has helped enliven and enrich the program. I hope you feel that too. And uh, there are a series of breakout sessions later on today after the main plenary events uh, have concluded. I hope you will take the opportunity to, uh, to take part in some of them. So that's uh, enough from me. Uh, we now move on to our program of speakers for this morning. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, welcome to the stage in a minute um, uh, the first speaker, Dame Philippa Russell. Um, she uh, and I know each other from a, a number of uh, years of uh, working around issues affecting carers and uh, then uh, I was the minister and I was on the receiving end of her very powerful advocacy for the uh, voice of carers uh, and, and the experience they bring of uh, caring for people. Um, she is a vice president of Carers UK and also has direct experience as a carer. Uh, I'm really very pleased that she is here to talk to us today. Look forward to what she has to say. If I can welcome Dame Philippa to the stage.